Hello and welcome to another episode. In the first episode I talked about the exposure value equation. One of the parameters was the aperture. Today I thought I'd show you a little bit more on how the aperture actually works. So today we are talking about the aperture and all cameras have an aperture. Most of them have a adjustable aperture, but not all of them. For instance, a cell phone or a smartphone will have a locked aperture in most cases. Most often people are talking about a number which is called the F number. And the F number is the focal ratio, the ratio between the lens length in millimeters divided by the aperture diameter in millimeters. A small focal ratio will actually be a diameter of the aperture which is close to the length of the lens. The aperture actually have two effects. The first effect is the actual opening of, of the aperture. The more open it is, the more light you will let in to your photosensitive surface. So if there is low light conditions, then a large aperture or a small F number will be better for you to actually capture that light. The second effect is the depth of field. The smaller the F number, the smaller or the narrower the depth of field will be. So if you are looking for a special effect with a narrow depth of field in a well-lit scene, you might bump into some issues. As I said, there are two main effects, but there are also two side effects. The first effect is something called lens softness. If you are shooting with the lens wide open or the smallest F number you are getting on your lens, you might experience that the lens looks kind of soft or the image or the result looks kind of soft. This is the lens softness. Most often it's avoided by stopping the lens down a num F number or two. So for instance, if you have a F2.8 lens, try shooting at F.4 or F5.6 um, or something like that. Then, on digital cameras, you have something called diffraction. And the diffraction is kind of an advanced thing, but the larger the F number is, the more diffraction you will get in your image, leading to a more of a soft look on the image on the other side as well. So the lens will actually give you the best results in the mid-range of the F numbers. I thought I'd move a little bit down to the marshes below me here and shoot a tree which will give you some examples on how the F number actually works. So, I found this tree here. And I thought this would be a perfect example on how the aperture actually works. Uh, you will see the effects of um, a narrow aperture and a wide aperture. So here comes the examples. As you can see from the example now, the image with a small F number will actually give you a narrow depth of field. A image with a larger F number will give you a deeper depth of field. The result is that more of the image is in focus when you have a larger F number. I really hope you liked this week's video and that you have a deeper understanding on how the aperture actually works. Till next time, go out there and grab those images.